Okay, so what we just saw was an extremely endo or exothermic reaction. Exo. Exothermic reaction, okay? Now, so what happened to the surroundings in an exothermic reaction? It got very hot. So what happens to the surroundings in an endothermic reaction? They get cold, right? So if we were to take some... Oh, If we were to take, oops, might help if I plug it in. Barium hydroxide, BaOH2, let's just say 20 grams of it. Point zero eight, close enough. And then we were to take some ammonium thiocyanate. Ammonium thiocyanate is NH four SCN plus barium hydroxide. Okay, we're going to make barium thiocyanate plus what product? Okay, well, what would be in double replacement, what are we going to make? NH4 OH. NH4 plus OH minus, because the bearing went with the thios, this is called the thiocyanate ion. Okay, we'll talk about that in one second. Okay, so we're going to get barium thiocyanate plus ammonium Hydroxide, but what do we know about ammonium hydroxide? Into eight NH3 in water. That's one of our two main gas forming reactions. But carbonic acid, H2CO3, always goes into H2O and CO2. And then the ammonium hydroxide always goes to ammonia gas plus H2O liquid. Okay, now we need to balance that. We're going to get two SCN, so we need two here two here, and two there. Okay? Now, it's the state of that is going to be important that we make ammonia gas because this is going to be an endothermic reaction. So if I take, now, also, the, this is right here. This is called the thiocyanate ion. And it's just kind of cool in that if we do the Lewis dot structure for it, S, C, N, minus, it's going to have 16 electrons. So, carbon, nitrogen, sulfur. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Now, this is something, I haven't graded y'all's uh, Lewis dot structures yet. I did the first class already. I did the multiple choice and the Lewis dot structure is all I got so far. But one of the mistakes that people were making is that they would do something like this and put lone pair on the central atom without the outside ones having eight. You always satisfy the outside ones first. Okay? The central atom is always, uh, electrons are added to it last. So now I have 16 electrons. I have no more places to put electrons. So what do I do? Double bond. Now sulfur, can sulfur form double bonds? Let me ask you this. Can halogens form double bonds? No. Yet people tried on the test in, a, in a, a, oh, I think it was boron trichloride or aluminum trichloride. I think it was aluminum trichloride, ALCl3. Y'all tried to double bond that chlorine to get that eighth spot, the eight electrons. But what do we know about aluminum? It only has six. It forms stable molecules. Halogens don't double bond. Okay? There was another one where uh, I think it was the, uh, I don't know, there was a double bond on the oxygen, but a lot of people were putting a double bond on the chlorine, okay? Be but halogens don't form double bonds. So, but sulfur, the oxygen family, can. So we have two choices here. Since I have two choices, what does that mean? Resonance. 
And by the way, it's resonance, R-E-S-O-N-A-N-C-E, not resident or resonance. Or, I saw all kinds of spellings of it so far. Okay? So resident evil here just on this. So we go. We can go a triple bond here on this one because nitrogen can form a triple bond. And we can have SCN looking like that. That's that cyanide triple bond, so thiocyanate. Or we can have S looking like this, carbon, nitrogen looking like this. And we could do a double bond here and a double bond here. Minus. Either one of these are legitimate Lewis dot structures. So if we want to get the bond order, it's kind of crazy on this one because the bonds aren't identical here, but what would the bond order between the carbon and sulfur be if this is a single bond and that's a double bond? 1.5. Okay? So somebody else tell me then, if it's a triple bond here and a double bond there, what's the bond order going to be? Okay? 2.5. Does everybody see that? It's three bonds and two bonds. It's going to be somewhere in between that, so it's going to be two and a half. This is a single bond and a double bond, so it's going to be somewhere in between that. It's going to be one and a half. So it's got resonance, but it doesn't have the same resonance on both sides. So unlike like the carbonate ion, these aren't going to be identical bonds, bond strength and all that. This one's going to be stronger than this one. But there, this one's going to be stronger than a single, but weaker than a double. This one's going to be stronger than a double, but weaker than a triple and all the, all the characteristics that go with So that's the thiocyanate ion. It's just another unique ion there. So if I take 10 grams of it into a beaker, Okay, so I have 10 grams there, and now I just put a dab of water onto this, okay, oh shoot, dab of water all over our, I didn't do a very good job of getting a dab, but we mix these together, actually I want to be in the smaller beaker, okay, put them on our water, stir them up. Now normally two solids don't mix, but these two do. Notice it's kind of making a slurry. Now I need someone to come up here and take a whiff, take a smell. Come on, anybody who wants to. Come here, up front, up front, in front, in front, in front, in front. You just wanted to get in the camera. Okay, take a, take a whiff. Oh, God, that's strong. <laughs> yeah, okay, take a smell. Do we recognize the smell at all? Yeah. I can smell it from here. It's the thing you like, what's that called? It's like you try to... Yeah. Like a smelling salt? Yeah. Is it a smell? You still don't smell anything? <laughs> Are you immune to this? <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of liked the nasty smell. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, does anybody recognize the smell? It's ammonia. It's that ammonia gas smell being given off. Now, notice here that it's so cold that it froze the beaker to the piece of wood. Okay. It froze the beaker to the piece of wood. Extremely endothermic reaction. Okay? Now we need to pay attention to that because what we're about to talk about, nature doesn't like endothermic reactions, but the fact that it's producing a gas is very important as to why this reaction occurs. So what we want to know is what things drive a chemical reaction? Why is thermite so you know, reactive and you know, not explosive, but just tremendous amounts of heat being released? Versus mixing these, it gets super cold. How can we measure that? What's the driving force? What makes reactions happen? Why when I put, you know, if I was to wear my, my wedding ring and I put it into 
acid, why doesn't it react with acid but magnesium metal does? What causes reactions to occur and other reactions not to occur? That's what thermochemistry is all about, the driving forces, the energy changes that occur in nature. So we want to look at that. So that's going to be, ch it's going to be chapter 5 and 19, but we're going to just before Christmas only get into chapter 9. So, chapter 5, <coughs> thermochemistry. Now, just so you know, we're going to take the PEZ quiz right at the very end, okay? The, the second period at the end. Two driving forces that cause chemical reactions to occur. Enthalpy and entropy. Does anybody know what either one of those are? I know entropy is like the organization. Entropy is kind of like the organization. You're correct. But generally we talk about it in the other way. Entropy is a measure of the chaos or the disorder of a system. So what's enthalpy? What did he say? It's the heat. It's the energy changes. So the first one we're going to talk about is enthalpy. It's the heat changes that occur during a chemical reaction during a chemical reaction that occurs, I hate to use the word twice, but at constant pressure. Now in your textbook, in the very first pages of chapter 5 that I know that you're probably going to want to go home, race, and read tonight, it goes through and talks about a theoretical description of energy, work, constant <coughs> pressure. Uh, it's, it's a lot of, really, it's a combination of physics and chemistry together. Um, but really, we don't need to know the, the ins and outs of all that because by the time they get to the end of that first section, they come to the, the, the conclusion that when you calculate the energy changes of a reaction at constant pressure, they call that the enthalpy, which we are always just going to refer to as the heat of the reaction. So again, uh, you... Uh, Aman, you were asking if I know, or well, I don't know, Rez, I don't know, who somebody as we were walking down was asking me if I knew any of the Hindi language. Who asked me that? Arez? Okay. I didn't know. Somebody asked me. So, he gave, told, asked me a word and I didn't know what it meant. Okay? Are you laughing because I always get the two of y'all confused? No, I was. Oh. <laughs> Why are we laughing? Not when you're laughing at me. No, on camera. Not, we're not laughing at 
the whole world knows now that you're laughing at me. <laughs> anyway, the point is, he asked me if I knew what a Hindi word was, and I said no. So he would have to interpret it for me, because I don't know the language. So I hear, como esta usted, the little bit of Spanish I know, and I, okay, so I have to interpret in my mind, how are you? When I hear chemistry lingo, I hear chemistry words, it's like a foreign language to me. I have to interpret that back into words that I understand. So anytime you hear the word enthalpy, that's chemistry lingo, you got to translate that to heat. They even use delta H to represent it. So it's the heat changes that occur at constant pressure during a chemical reaction. It's the heat release from the paper when it's burning. We want to measure that heat change that occurs. Okay? Now, in terms of enthalpy, in terms of energy, nature tends to favor reactions that go from higher potential energy to lower potential energy. Higher to lower potential energy. Now, all of these energy changes that we are talking about in compounds, in chemical reactions, is always potential energy, which is energy of position. Atoms changing positions relative to one another. Bonds breaking, bonds forming. We're not talking about is it getting hot, is it getting cold. Now, as the reaction, if it favors reactions going from higher to lower potential energy, what's happening to that potential energy? Where is it going? It's going to the surroundings, which is absorbing it as kin kinetic energy. So the surroundings are changing temperature. They're getting hot or they're getting cold. But the system itself, when we're talking about these changes here, is potential. It's changes in how are the atoms arranged with one another. So in other words, when you have the atoms arranged in the paper, the carbon to hydrogen to oxygen and the different elements that are in the paper, they're bonded in a certain way. They have a certain potential energy. There's certain, uh, you know, bond energies as far as the, the bond angles and where they all are combining. But when they react, they form some carbon dioxide in water, and those are much more stable ways in which carbon and oxygen and hydrogen and oxygen can combine. And so the reaction, the atoms rearrange and form a more stable arrangement of the atoms, the ashes, the gases and the water that's produced. They're going to be at a lower potential energy than the reactants are. The difference in that potential energy was then released to the surroundings, which we observed as the fire, the heat and light, the energy being released to the surroundings, and then the surroundings absorb it as kinetic energy and start moving faster and the temperature goes up. Okay? And even the products become part of the surroundings because the iron in the thermite that we just did, the iron that is produced as the product, once it's made, it becomes part of the surroundings then because it's done reacting and so the heat that's being given off by the rest of the reaction then heats up that iron and makes it so hot that it's red hot and melted. And then that's the stream that we saw come down through the cookie sheet or the, the cake pan and into the fire pot that didn't really do its job. And so um, it's just kind of, we just need to make sure we always understand the difference between the system and the surroundings. That we're dealing with potential energy of the system the surroundings are absorbing it and turning it into kinetic energy. We've talked a lot about that with the solution process as well. Okay? So if we want to look at that graphically, this is another highly seen graph. And you probably, I think you guys did this in Chemistry 1. That's an E. Potential energy. And this is reaction progress. Really, it's time. Some say reaction coordinate. It's just as we go from reactants, where if it's an exothermic reaction, if it's a nature-favored reaction, exothermic, where if this is reactants, 
where a product's going to be. Higher or lower? Lower, right? Now, can it go straight from reactants to products? What it has to happen? has to go up, because what is that up? The activation energy. So this here, this is what we had to add in. That's my EA, which is my energy of activation. What is that defined as? How can we define energy of activation? Not speed up. To start it. Okay, so where is my heat of the reaction going to be? From where to where? From here to here? What about the dotted line? This here? Well, that's my energy of activation. What's my heat of reaction? It's important to know the question before you try and answer From here to here? Okay, no. What's the difference here? It's going to be the difference in energy between what? Reactants and products. So it's going to be this difference right here. This is my delta H of the reaction. Now, is that going to be positive or negative if it's exothermic? It's going to be negative. So now what would this look like if it were endothermic? Opposite meaning what? Do I still have an activation energy? So I have my reactants. This time I'm going to end up higher. So where does EA go from? Where does EA go from? From here? Up? It's going to be here. What's this going to be? And is it going to be positive or negative? Please come to the front desk for check out. Adrian Castro, please It's going to be positive. Okay? So you can go ahead and take a break. <laughs>